Hi, this is Amar again from SSOTrust.com Australia and in this video I am going to be showing you how you can successfully install an SSL certificate on WAMP server. So I'm here on the WAMP server homepage and as you can see our connection to the site is not yet secure and we are going to make sure it is. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm here on the SSL Trust homepage and the first thing that we're going to do is generate a private key and a CSR for our certificate. So we're going to scroll down to the bottom of the page and then click on the CSR and key generator under tools and services. So basically a CSR or certificate sign in request is nothing but a request initiated by you the client through the certificate authority which contains all the necessary information such as the domain name and any business details which are stored in a hashed form. On the technical side it also contains the public key which will be signed by the certificate authority and returned to you in the issued certificate. So we're going to scroll down now and we're going to fill in these details real quick. So type in your domain name here and the name of your organization the organizational units such as IT the city or town that you reside in the state or province and the country code or the country that you live in type in your email address and we're going to choose the 2048 bit root length for this video and click on generate CSR. So this is your private key and this is your certificate sign request. So make sure you save this information either in, in a notepad file or in whatever way you like. But what I'm going to do is copy the private key from the very start to the very end. And I'm going to create a new text document and paste these details here. Make sure you copy and paste this from the very start to the very end including all the dashes and we're gonna save it as let's call it private and this is not a text document you're gonna save it as a type private dot key and make sure you uncheck the dot txt document type and click on save whereas you can do the same for the CSR or the certificate sign request but I'm just gonna leave the page open so we can proceed to order and configure our SSL certificate okay so I'm here on the SSL Trust homepage and we're gonna move on to order and configure our certificate now I do need to mention the fact that since you're using VAMP server you must be doing development on your local machine and you need an SSL certificate to implement various features and to test or validate your production environment. Now you can purchase an SSL certificate for the same common name and just save your private key and CSR. Now when you move your website to the internet and purchase a hosting service then you can use the same SSL certificate for your website too. So this is very beneficial and you can use it for both local development as well as moving your website to the internet. Now SSL Trust has partnered with various leading security authorities and we offer SSL certificates for all types of businesses whether you're a small business and you need cheap SSL security whether you're a larger business and you need more validation and additional security or whether you are, you are an organization and you need premium extended validation and the top tier features and you want to protect your website from hackers and so on and we've got wildcard SSL certificates so if you've got multiple subdomains that you want to secure under one certificate this is the option for you and the last option is the multi-domain SSL certificate you can use this if you want to secure up to 500 domains under your company's network 
So what I'm going to do is scroll up and head over to the standard SSL certificates. Now, since this is a demo video, I'm going to go with the Commodore Positive SSL. You can choose the duration of your certificate like this. Click on Buy SSL and choose your currency here too. Now scroll down and click on Checkout. Fill in your billing details real quick. Choose your preferred method of payment and agree to the terms of service and click on complete order. Once you make your payment, you can click on the dashboard and access your SSL certificate from here. Scroll down and we're going to click on the start certificate configuration button right here. But if you have an alternate person doing this configuration for you, you can provide this very link to them and let's click on start so let's copy and paste our csr right from the very start to the very end including all the dashes copy and paste it right here click on the verify csr button at the bottom to verify your certificate sign -in request and server type let's, let's uh, select apache since web server uses apache so the details look just about good and if they don't make sure you redo your certificate sign -in request and your private key now click on next step now we're, we're going to enter a few details here your title your name and your email address Now, if you have a technical contact doing this for you, please make sure to enter their details here. Otherwise, you can click on next step. Okay, so now comes the important part of the process, which is domain control validation. So basically, you need to prove to the certificate issuing authority, which in this case is Sectigo, that you own your domain name and have complete access to it. Now, there are various methods to do this, but the first is the email method. So basically, you should have an email address with this exact addresses, one of these, and you'll be sent an email. And upon clicking on that mail, you can click on a verification link, which will make sure that Sectigo validates your domain name and you will be issued your certificate. The second option is the HTTP file method. Now, in this method, you will have to create a text file with this exact name and you will need to create these extra directories under your server and then copy and paste these contents into that text file. And then click on the check file button right here and your domain name should be validated. Now the third or the easiest method in this case is the CNAME validation method. So basically, you need to head to your DNS settings, either with your domain name or hosting provider, depends on where you've pointed your name server to. We are going to copy the CNAME record and head over to our DNS settings and click on add new record right here. Select the type as CNAME and the host, just paste the value you've copied. And the pointing to value, we're going to copy this from the very start to the very end, the CNAME value and paste it right here. Click on save and then come back and click on the check DNS button, uh, DNS record button right here and then click on search and as you can see our DNS record is not yet propagated and it will take from a few minutes up to an hour depending on your DNS server's propagation speed for the record to be validated but in the meanwhile you can come back here and click on the submit configuration button right here as you can see our configuration was a success and this is our order number and our status is that we are awaiting validation so click here to access the validation manager and as you can see our domain control validation is complete let's go to our DNS record and as you can see, it has propagated in quite a few places and that's enough for the domain to be validated. So that's it. 
but in case your DNS record is not validated and not picked up by Sectigo, you can come back here to the dashboard. Let me close this up. Click on the dashboard. Uh, choose your certificate. And then there would be a button here called Access Domain Control Validation Manager. And you can access domain control from that button right here. And furthermore, once you do that, you will be taken to that same domain control validation page, which we just closed. Let me show this up real quick. This page right here. And once you click on this, you can, there'll be a drop down menu on which you can select your method and redo the domain control validation so that basically it refreshes things up, uh, it refreshes things up on Sectigo's end. And that's it. This should be enough to get you your certificate. So we're going to close this and click on the collect or download certificate button right here. Let me close this now. There's no need for this. And now we are going to select the format as separate primary and intermediate .cit files. And just click on the download certificate button right here. Once you do that, we're gonna, let's name it RAM set, save it on the desktop, click on save. Open this up and let me ex extract this to the desktop. And that's it. You have downloaded your certificate files right here and your private key. Okay, so once you have downloaded your certificate files, we are going to open the certificate, the main certificate with our preferred text editor such as Visual Studio Code. And do the same for the intermediate certificate. Now we're going to copy the intermediate certificate from the very start to the very end. And then paste it at the bottom of the main certificate. Once you do that, click on Control S and save this file and close this up. Now what we did basically was to move the intermediate certificate and the main certificate into one file so that we can uh, configure our certificate with ease. So now let's upload the certificate files to our WAMP web server. So I'm going to open, navigate to that the main WAMP SSL directory or the folder and then you know the ramp bin apache the version conf and then ssl create a folder called ssl i just created it and you can do the same and now we're gonna move these files or copy and paste these files here under the ssl directory so that's it. We have now uploaded the certificate files to our WAMP web server. Now to make sure that the common name in your certificate matches the local host or the website's name, we're going to make a change right here. So open File Explorer, go to the Windows Drive, click on Windows, scroll down and find System32. And then scroll down again, find the Drivers folder open it up then etc and then open the host file with your preferred text editor I'm gonna go with Visual Studio Code and then just make one change here type in 127.0.0.1 and type in your domain name right here control s save this file retry as administrator and that's it once you save this file you can close this up and let me verify this changes right here so instead of localhost you can type in your domain name now and as you can see it is pointing to the WAMP server so the next step in this process is to edit the main apache configuration file and the apache ssl configuration file so what we're going to do is we can open File Explorer and navigate to that folder. Now, I need to mention again that there is a written guide in the very description of this, of this video. And you can refer to the path there. So scroll down, 
navigate to the directory where you've downloaded WAMP. So click on WAMP. And then we're going to click on bin, Apache, the Apache version. We're going to go to conf and we're going to open the httpd file. So we're going to open it with some editor. And then we're going to make a few changes right here. So the first thing that we're going to do is copy the load module thing here, the exact code and press control F and paste it right here. So we are going to uncomment three commands to make sure that SSL functions properly on your WAMP server. So just remove the hashtag here and now you've uncommented the first one. Do the same for the second one. Copy and paste it right here under find. So you won't need to scroll down and look for things manually. So just remove the hashtag for this command. And then the third command is this. So do the same for that. Paste it right here. And the editor should find this and then remove the hashtag. Now click on Control S and save this file. So now that we've made changes to the httpd conf, so let's close this up. Now we need to make changes to the httpd SSL module or the SSL configuration file. I Again, you can follow the path in the very description of this video in the commands, or you can just click on the extra folder which is uh, located under conf, click on extra. You can see the path displayed being displayed here. And then open httpd SSL. Let's open this up with the same editor. And now we're gonna need to make a few changes here. So the first change that we're going to make is scroll down and find the document root right here. Make sure you change it to install underscore dir. And now the HE docs, we're going to change it to www in small letters. And then server name, make sure you change it to your domain name. then server admin you can add your email address here or leave it as it is doesn't matter and then scroll down and make two more changes right here so the SSL certificate file is called it's under conf under SSL and it's called certificate.crt so we're going to change it to that and make sure that whatever path or whatever directories you use it matches the location of the file and the same on the conf there's SSL and the private key is called private.key so basically four or five changes depending on whether you choose to do the email or not so control s let's save this file and now close this up the last step in this process is to edit the Apache virtual host file so we're going to navigate to AMP again, then bin, Apache, the version, and then we're going to go to conf, extra, and then open the vhost file. Uh, once you're in the vhost file, we're going to make a few changes. Change port 80 to 443. Change the server name to your domain name, sslguides.com.au and the server alias we're going to add www right here and paste the domain name now there's two more changes that you need to make and now i mentioned that you can find the commands in the very description of this video and we're going to add these three commands copy and paste them right after the directory tag paste them right here 
and make sure the path matches the location of your certificate and then control s save this file we're going to click on ramp server and restart all services to make sure our configuration files take new configuration and come in effect now we're going to open the browser and type in https colon double slash your domain name dot com and as you can see we have now successfully installed an ssl certificate on our WAMP server and our connection to the site is not now secure and this is our certificate issued by Sectigo and everything looks good this is how easy it was to install an SSL certificate on WAMP in Windows now there is a written guide in the very description of this video which you can refer to along with the video to make sure that you can easily install your SSL certificate now if you like this video give this a thumbs up if you were easily able to install your SSL certificate with a thumbs up if you've got any questions please put them in the comments below and that's it for this video thanks for watching